Welcome to the Coffee Hour, a show that involves you in verbal interaction. We have the 2020 feature, Sports with Brian Camp, and Entertainment News with DJ Pete. So settle in with coffee in hand, and enjoy the Coffee Hour. Now here's your host, Frank Allen. Frank Allen is not here today, he's taking off for the day. I'm just another guy wearing his mask. Hi everybody, yes, my name is Frank Allen, that was April Fools. You're welcome, and as usual, you're welcome. We're coming to you live from New York City. My name is Frank Allen. It is, it truly is, I can't pull off a mask. Anyway, it's the coffee hour, and we're here for another Friday, TGIF. We're gonna be here for the next hour, and we're here every Friday between the one full hour of uh, 10 to 11 a.m. And we're here each week. And of course, a lot of you who are regulars to the show, you know what the protocol is. So we invite you all to come in and sit back, relax, have some coffee, and maybe you're at work right now. We invite you to stay with us for as long as you can. And if you can't stay with us for the whole hour, we would appreciate any time you can uh, spare with us. But you may be at your office right now, right? And you get that 15 minute coffee break course sometimes they do that take that 15 minute coffee break and stay at your desk keep your computer on watch the show when the coffee break is over you'll still be with us and then you could multitask right do your work and watch us at the same time of course you know uh we have so much to talk about today brian camp is going to be here later on not too far away within this half hour of the show 20 past the hour with sports update with the latest developments in today's world of sports that's his part of the 2020 feature. And 20 to the hour, DJ Pete, of course, with entertainment news and reciting all of those birthdays of people of notoriety. That's all coming in. But Pete is not going to be here today, but he was kind enough to leave all of his information with us so we can uh, take care of the chores. So I am the fall guy today on the 20 or part of the 2020 feature. Anyway, it's nice for you to join us. And uh, later on in the program as well, we have. Uh, Movies that I'm going to be talking to you about, those great classic movies, those Turner classic movies, and uh, they're coming along just to enhance your weekend just a little bit. Sometimes you may not know what to do. I can be part of that action for you. Add on to uh, your bucket list for the weekend. A lot of people want to do things in the weekend. But listen, if you have great weather and you may not need it, I'm going to give it to you anyway. And speaking of weather, if you're going to chime in with us, and we hope that you do, because we would love to speak to you. I'll see you right there on the big screen. You can talk and get in on the conversation or maybe add something. I will see you right there. All you have to do is just type it right in there, and I will entertain your thoughts and your ideas, and uh, we'll get along pretty well. So stay with us for the next hour. We're all over the world, no matter where you go. We're on three places at one time. Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. And pretty soon, we're going to be on Twit TV. Twit TV. We have our account. It's all set up. We don't know too much about it just yet, but we'll tell you more about it later on in the program. Also, we're explain, we will explain what's happening on Facebook because we're not broadcasting live on Facebook. However, when this show is over, uh, we will do the rebroadcast. We will put it on, post it on Facebook. So those of you who are looking for us, you can actually see the show anyway, not in real time, but it's there anyway. Uh, a lot of people probably didn't know and probably wondered why they haven't seen us on Facebook. Well, but we are live on YouTube and on Instagram. So I want to say hi to all of you guys there who are watching us right now. And um, we'll get involved with all of that. Uh, great stuff telling you about a lot of things if you're going to chime in ladies and gentlemen uh also give us your weather forecast no matter where you are around the world we would like to do that that's not something that's mandatory but we also like to ask uh, for your help on that if you have a, a, a weather that you could like convey to us wherever you are and uh, we would like to hear from you uh but if you're from New York City, don't worry about it. If you're from New York, I'll take care of that. I have the local weather for you in New York. We'll talk more about that. That'll all be coming up uh, right through this hour. So ladies and gentlemen, as we always do, let's get started, all right? What would the coffee hour be without a little coffee, Java, or Joe, however you wanna phrase it? Ladies and gentlemen, excuse me while I shoot up. It's like a punch in the face, but a good one. 
all right? It just gets you, it gets you alert. Great coffee. Okay, so here we are once again. And um, those of you, uh, you know, we just wrapped up uh, Women's History Month. We wrapped it up last night, right? But we're still on the trail of keeping women alive and making sure that uh, they stay alive and give them what they do is like finances or whatever it is, it's about time, right? But uh, that's all taken care of. Um, you probably heard, ladies and gentlemen, I just wanna relay this to you, that Bruce Willis has retired from acting. You probably heard about that. And that's due to a diagnosis of uh, aphasia. Now that's a brain disease, which uh, kind of puts you unconscious. When I say unconscious, I mean, you can't really communicate. We don't know how he got it. Uh, we'll get more information as it goes along. We'll, we'll find out more on how it happened. But uh, he's retiring from acting. So his family posted it all over uh, Twitter yesterday. It was all over the news. And uh, so we're sorry to hear about that. Bruce Willis, as you know, was in all of the Die Hard series, you know, and he start, made, his start, made his mark on that sitcom along with Sybil S Shepherd, that sitcom called Moonlighting. And of course, Bruce Willis is from Germany. He was born in Germany, but I heard a story years ago, I don't know how true it was, that he used to also be a bartender. I think he was working in Brooklyn. And, you know, sometimes bartenders, they do things, they upbeat kind of people, they joke around, just, just lift up the spirits of the customer. Well, he was one of the guys that used to joke around and they used to have a lot of fun with him. And he was discovered in a bar. That's what I heard. That's the story I heard. Don't know how true it is but I'll probably get more information about that to find out, to confirm whether that's true or not. But that's a way, that's a, that's a hell of a way to get started in the business. A lot of people get started in the business different ways. Now he got started the hard way. These days, all you have to do is go on YouTube and you could be discovered there or any other uh, social media. And uh, people sing, uh, they do all kinds of uh, talented things and they be discovered and they become sensations. But before they become the mainstream sensation, they become YouTube sensation or Facebook sensations or whatever medium they start with. Justin Bieber was one of them uh, who started on YouTube and uh, made his mark and a lot of other people. And so oh, are they gonna select me to be a mark? I don't, I don't consider myself a sensation, not even a YouTube sensation. We just, we just like to have fun. We, we like to do it. If it comes up, so be it. Don't worry about it. Show business, I've had it. I've had my share of it anyway. So uh, it's time to turn it over to the next people. But anyway, we want to continue to pray for uh, Bruce Willis. I believe in miracles, things may happen. You know, they, they can happen. And sometimes they will happen. You know, uh, we'll see what happens, you know, down the line. We'll keep him informed if we get any other information about Bruce's condition. Uh, but uh, that's the way it is. Also, while we're at it, we want to talk about the people of Ukraine. We want to say prayers for them and make sure everything else is, is pretty good because, you know, we have a war on right now. And if you go to the Ukraine and even if you see the images on TV of Ukraine, they, it's like a war zone. It's like the end of the world. Uh, houses that used to be luxurious houses, high rises, are now s covered with soot and it's scorched, windows busted out. And who's ever, who was ever in there, I hope, I hope nobody was, but uh, whoever had property and, and, and belongings there, it's all up in smoke. But the people of Ukraine are finding ways to get out. They want to do it desperately, and they're doing it desperately. I see these, these ladies, they're taking their children, their husbands are sending their, their, their wives and their children across the border to meet friends and family to pick them up so they could uh, uh, seek refuge while the husbands stay home. And they that, that's what their MO was, to stay home because of the fact they wanna do the fight. And in some cases, the women go over across the board with their children, leave them there with family and friends that make sure that they're safe. And then they come back over to Ukraine to fight with their husbands. And they're putting up a big fight. So Russia is got a fight on their hand. I, I, I think Russia probably thought it would be easy. All they had to do is wipe them out. But uh, the, the people of Ukraine are so innovative. Uh, they, they, they build things uh, to block, block them from coming in. As you already know, one of the Russian tanks were destroyed. You know, so there's no stopping them. 
you know, uh, Putin said to them in the beginning at some time ago, he said, you know, if you surrender, we will cease fire. And they say, well, that's not going to happen. And just about a day or two ago, you know, they released a statement from Putin allegedly that uh, that they're holding back the troops, they're pulling troops out, uh, but they're advising the White House and advising to take that with a grain of salt because we never know. That could be a trick, that could be an okie doke, and you don't want to get involved in it. So everybody's keeping on their toes, especially the people of Ukraine who are involved in it, keeping up on their toes and making sure that um, they're as safe as possible. And I look at the images on TV and they are real, and they're really desperate to get out of there. I see the people, they're carrying their babies and their pets and they're walking miles and miles just to get to the train because there's no transportation for them. And uh, some of them just have the attitude, you know, I just rather live in the street somewhere else than to, you know, be involved in this war. Because let's face it, people have already died already babies, women, men, bombings, they died, people, and they're not giving a hoot about human life, and they continue to do so. So, ladies and gentlemen, with that, let's keep our minds open and our prayers up in the air and continue to pray for them, because hopefully this war would be over, and when you come right down to it, there's not a winner when it comes to war. There are no winners when it comes to war because everyone loses. And um, there was some point in time when he was talking about, and I'm talking about Putin, talking about pulling out the, uh, the big guns, like the uh, nuclear weapons, which is something that we want to see. We don't want this thing to escalate up until it gets to the point of World War III. We don't want that. We're looking to get out of this, and we're looking for a bright side of all of this. So, you know, when one thing happens, you think it's over, subsides, and then something else comes on. We were fighting with this coronavirus, and by the way, it's still on. You know, people are are talking about, oh, the it's the, the pandemic is over, it's over, it's still on, it's on. And we have so much to think about between the pandemic and this war. And so uh, let's just just keep it, let's keep things real here. You know, we don't know what's gonna happen in the end, but they're giving it a shot and they're giving it a good try. And as far as the virus is concerned, we still are fighting that. That's another battle that we're fighting. So folks, uh, don't claim that it's over just because some cities are holding back mandates and saying, okay, we don't have to do this anymore. We don't have to, that doesn't say, they didn't say that the virus is over. They're just a little more comfortable now for you to go into a restaurant or a bar and relax without a mask. All right, but keep in mind the virus is still on. Still protect yourself, even if you go to uh, closed in places. You know, wear the mask if you're taking bus uh, or subway transportation, flying or anything like that. Wear your mask. It's essential. So uh, again, continue those prayers going up for Ukraine, and um, we um, we really uh, hope for the best for all of us because it affects all of us. If you're just joining us, the name of the show is called The Coffee Hour. My name is Frank Allen. And of course, we're here every Friday at this time. Uh, excuse me while I shoot up. Every Friday from 10 to 11 Eastern. And those of you who are in a different time zone, well, that's a different time for you. It's seven in the morning, it's after seven in the morning if you're on the West Coast. So uh, just keep things going. Say howdy to all you guys in Texas. We got a few people out in Texas. They, they hit us up. So we want to say howdy, y'all, in Texas. And, uh, you know, I, I look at Texas. I, I, I think Texas is a good place. I've never been to Texas, but I have a feeling that I would love it if I went there. I, I've seen footage of people in Texas. They, they do hoedowns and barbecues and have a lot of fun and, and uh, they party, party, party. So it looks like a fun uh, state, Texas, depending, I guess, depending on where you go in Texas, but it looks like a fun state. But it's like no other place, you know, like New York, no other place like New York, 24 hours, seven days a week, 365 days, open eyes, the same thing with Las Vegas, uh, even more so because they gamble other than 
doing the uh, other things, Showtime and all of that. It's all great. So uh, welcome once again. It's coming up to 15 minutes past the hour. We're five minutes away from Brian coming in. We're doing the latest developments in today's world of sports on Sports Update. And that'll be along pretty soon, just before you know it. Also, you already know it's been a hell of a week in the entertainment business. You heard about this situation. I didn't see it in real time. But the Oscars last Sunday, they had more than a show, more than a show on their hand. And I'm talking about the Will Smith saga. And you've heard about it. You've seen the footage, seen the video so many times that, um, you know, you sort of get tired of it. And Will Smith, there's so every day something comes along. When I went off the air last night on Talk Back Live, more developments happened. Now they're talking about uh, reprimanding uh, uh, Will Smith. And I don't know what that means. I don't know. Maybe they're going to take away his Oscar or maybe they're not going to invite him back to the Oscars anymore. Uh, I do know at that particular time when they were there, he was asked to leave the building. And he refused. His people were there, and they and he refused to leave. Another development that popped up last night is that LA police were outside waiting, and they spoke to Chris Rock, and they said, "Chris, we're prepared to take him out and put him in handcuffs and arrest him. All you have to do is tell us if you want to press charges or not." And as kind-hearted as he was, he refused to press charges. Even at this particular point, uh, he didn't press any charges. And uh, that slap in the face, that was something I'm pretty sure that was, I was embarrassed for him. I was embarrassed for both parties, as a matter of fact. To see a man walk up on the stage while a, 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 uh, a prestigious show is going on, and it just threw everyone for a loop and even the people that were there. Now I can imagine, I, I, I really can't imagine what it was like to actually be there, to see that. To see it on TV was one thing, but I'm pretty sure it was something else when people, because the people that were there, they saw everything, every little detail that was going on, every little moaning groan they heard, every little sigh and every little look, they witnessed it all. And that just reminds me that there was another video released last night before I went on the air on Talk Back Live. Now we saw, all saw the video when he went there, went up on the stage and smacked him and then came back and used the foul language, all right? We saw the front part of that video. Someone in the back sitting behind Will Smith uh, videoed. And so what we saw was the same thing. The only thing that we didn't see is the reaction of Jada, uh, Jada, uh, uh, um, uh, I'm starting to lose it here. Uh, Jada Smith. Now, Jada Smith um, was there. Now, you saw the reaction when he made the joke. And the joke was that uh, he's looking forward to seeing, and I'm saying it in so many words, I'm paraphrasing here, I'm not quoting because he, but in paraphrasing, say, saying that uh, he's looking forward to seeing the sequel of G.I. Jane. And that's because of the, the shaved head that she had. Uh, uh, she saw, when, when he said that, her expression just took another turn. She was smiling at first because he was cracking a joke, and then the expression turned and Will Smith was laughing at the joke too at first, but I think he didn't realize what had happened until he looked at his wife and I was told she gave him a look and the look didn't good look, the look didn't good look, the look didn't look good to him. And so he got up and went on the stage and smacked him. And the shot that was behind Will Smith when Chris, said, heck, Will Smith just smacked the S out of me. And she laughed at that. It, it, you didn't see it, but the video that I obtained last night showed the back of the head of Will Smith and Jada was there. And when he said that, she started laughing then. So there's a lot of new developments, a lot of new uh, um, uh, things that are happening and more are coming out, more are coming out. And we're going to talk more about it 
in just a few minutes because I want to say more about it because even some of the comedians, some of the supporters of Will Smith and some of the, port the supporters of uh, Chris Rock, they came out and showed their support and we'll tell you exactly you know, what some of them said uh, in the, uh, 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 the, uh, uh, at the ceremony. But it was something to see and I'm just hoping, I'm just really hoping that you know, this thing really blows over and uh, thing is gonna be okay. I'm just hoping. And, and see what happens. It's 20 minutes past the hour right now. And uh, we, we, we had, uh, I think he probably, we, we had Brian up there in the, uh, in the uh, room, in the waiting room there, uh, but he bowed out. I'm pretty sure he'll dial up again. But we're gonna talk more about the Will, the Will Smith saga. That's all coming up. It's all coming up. Cause it was the slap heard around the world. And, and if you ask me about it, I thought it was terrifying. I thought it was, um, I was, I was sad. I was disappointed at a, uh, a prestigious ceremony such as the Oscars. And you had to see that on TV. Now I'm pretty sure that wasn't on regular live TV because of the curse words and all of that. I'm pretty sure they blocked that out. I didn't see it. If you did, you know, let me know what you saw. I, don't, I didn't watch it in real time, but I'm pretty sure the full event, the cursing and everything uh, went on as they streamed it live on the internet. I'm pretty sure about that. So we'll have to find out uh, what happened on that. We'll have to find out what happened on that. Uh, Brian Camp is on the phone right now. So uh, we have, is there a problem, Brian? Let me see. Uh, Okay, let me see. Let me press that button there. Is you, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay, what happened? Didn't get through. Um, technical difficulties, but uh, I'm here on the phone. Okay, so you don't want to do. You don't want to go on live. Yeah. I mean, you don't want to go on the air. You you want to do it by telephone. No. Okay. okay, so we're going to do it by telephone today. Brian, here's the latest developments in today's world of sports. What happened, though? It was a technical... I don't know. It was, I, I think it's something on my part. Um, I couldn't get the signal. It's, it's definitely on my part. You know, um, I'm out of town, so it, so whenever you're out of town, you know, that's what happens. In things, fact, I'm in New York City. Yeah. So. And things happen. But, but good morning to you and to everybody. hope everybody's doing well. Uh, like I said, I am in New York, and it's 52 degrees um, here in the city, and um, it's cloudy. And uh, we're just going to, might have clouds all day today, but um, let's see how it goes. We're hoping that no more rain occurred. It was raining a lot last night. Uh, slept good in the rain because, you know, when the rain hits the windows and the, and, and, and the glass, it, it's a beautiful sound. You go right to sleep, you sleep like a baby. <laughs> But this is final four weekend. We're down to four teams for the men and women. It starts tonight for the women, April first, which is today. South Carolina versus Louisville at seven o'clock on ESPN, and the second game at nine thirty on ESPN also is Connecticut versus Stanford. And on Sunday, championship game. So the winner of those two games will meet face off for the championship of women's college basketball. On the men's side, Final Four starts tomorrow, April 2nd. First game is at 6.09, tip-off time. You have Villanova versus Kansas. And the second game is at 8.49, tip-off. North Carolina versus Duke, the biggest rivalry in college basketball. Both games will be on TBS. Championship game will be played on Monday. The winner of those two games will face off with one another. So. All weekend of college basketball, women and men, and don't forget your NBA um, scores too. The teams are playing in action, and guess what? Baseball is right around the corner. Baseball is right there, right around the corner. So summer's coming. Whenever you hear baseball, summer is definitely coming. Uh, speaking of baseball, you're gonna have um, 
They're going to have the inspections of the empire's expecting um, the inspection of uh, pitches that's doing putting foreign um, substance on the ball, like scuffing up the ball, spitting the ball, or dirty up the ball. So they're going to do random checkings on every inning, uh, once, twice at any given time. So be on the lookout for that. Hope that everything goes well with, with that. We don't want no more penalties or fines. Baseball has taken a hard hit in recent years, so we hope that things will be okay. In NFL football, um, we have a new rule now. All 32 teams are supposed to hire minority offensive assistant coaches for the 2022 season. Uh, part of a series of the policy enhance, enhancements announced on early this week to address the league's ongoing diversity efforts. This is part of the Rooney, um, the Rooney rule. Where that now it can't it's not only by the color of your skin, but it's by uh, a female. They have a right now to um to be on this rule. Uh, a member of ethnic or racial minority. The coach must work closely with the head coach and offensive staff with uh, with the goal of increasing minority participation in the pool of offensive coaches that eventually produces the most sought after candidates for head coaching position. Speaking of football, part owner New York Giants owner John Mara again strongly denied allegations of what the lawsuit that's pending on Brian Flores accusing his organization of a sham. Uh, but he said that he's not going to um, uh, give in. Uh, he said Listen, he's going, he said he will not sell this out of court. So he wants to go to court to clear not only his name but also the other organization's name as well. In the NBA, New York, City, New York City Mayor Eric Adams announced that the mandate for unvaccinated athletes and performance has been lifted. So we, we knew about that uh, late Friday afternoon of last week, but um, now that Nets, the Brooklyn Nets, the New York Knicks, the New York Yankees, and the New York Nets are allowed to play their games, their home games in the in stadiums and arenas, and um, so it's been lifted for unvaccinated players. So they can get back to normalcy, and let's see what happens. This day in sports, April 1st, 1938, heavyweight boxing champion Joe Lewis knocked out Harry Thomas in the fifth round of their bout in Chicago. That was the third defense by Joe Lewis, 1963. The New York Mets purchased future baseball Hall of Fame outfielder Duke Snyder from the Los Angeles Dodgers. Oh, I hate that name, the Los Angeles Dodgers. For forty thousand dollars. Forty thousand dollars. That's all it was back back then. Major League Baseball um staged his first ever collective strike. They resumed play April thirteenth, nineteen seventy two, when owners and players agreed to a five hundred thousand dollar increase pension fund payments. 1989, A. Bartlett um, has um, resumed as um, commissioner. Uh, he replaced um, the, uh, uh, at that time uh, Peter Europe. Now, those, and, and, that, and then he didn't last long at all because um, within a couple months later, five months later, he had passed away from a heart attack. So his tenure his tenure of um, being um, being the um, commissioner did not last long, so he had passed away. Um, it was tragic, very tragic. Uh, 1996. I don't know why I have this on my sports um, 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 thing, but Howard Stern radio show premieres in Boston, Massachusetts, on W W B C N 104.1 FM. He had the morning drive. So how it was, um, uh, how it started, um, that, that's what happened back then in 1996. I don't know, maybe it's because it's April 1st, maybe it's an a- uh, April Fool's joke, but that's what <laughs> popped up. Birthday, 1939, Phil Meeker, Hall of Fame pitcher, born in Blaine, Ohio. 1944, Rusty Starr was born in New Orleans, Louisiana. 1947, Norm Van Leer, born in East Liverpool, Ohio. 1961, Jim Jeffcoat was born a long-time Dallas Cowboy defenseman. 
was born in Long, Creek, Long Branch, New Jersey, and our very own Mark Jackson, 1965, was born in Brooklyn, New York, on this day. And ladies and gentlemen, that is sports. You don't like the sounds of the L.A. Dodgers. <laughs> what, 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 I do not. I'm, I'm a San Francisco Giants fan. Can I say that word around me? Would it, not would, at all. Would it make you feel any better if uh, the sound was the Brooklyn Dodgers? Um, not really, because I'm a, I'm a the San Francisco Giant used, used to be the New York Giant. That's right. That's so, right. Um, That's right. New York. The only thing great about the uh, Brooklyn Dodgers. Uh, I still I do wear uh, a Jackie Robinson jersey, and, <laughs> and uh, you know just the honor of of, the, of breaking the racial barrier, the color barrier, back in 1947. So I do honor that. I do honor him, yeah. and um, that's that's the only great thing about the Dodgers. Jackie Robinson could have gone to L.A. too, but he didn't want to go to L.A. Yeah, he had a chance to get, uh, they, I think they tried to trade him to the Giants. Yeah. And he said, I would rather retire than to join, to join the Giants. Yeah. Uh, and then he didn't, he didn't want to go to L.A. anyway. He wanted to stay. When they moved out of Brooklyn, I believe it was back in 1956. And, that was correct, yes. And moved to, Brook, moved to L.A. And uh, he had a chance to, to stay with the team, but he didn't want to go to L.A. He wanted to stay in, this, in Brooklyn. And... Um, you know, Brooklyn was convenient for a lot of the ball players that played back in those days. You know, like Gil Hodges lived in Brooklyn, and all he had to do was walk to the station. Yeah, that's you know, so true. Yeah, they had uh, back then, but yeah, they they when a lot of people were, especially New Yorkers, they were like really teed off about the t when when the Dodgers moved out to L.A. because they were set. They were set to move to stay in Brooklyn because you know where the site is today of the Barclay Center, where the Barclay Center is today? Yes. That was originally supposed to be the site of the uh, the new Dodger Stadium in Brooklyn. Notice, 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 the, notice the Barclay Center. Notice the shape. It looked just like Ebbets Field. Yes, it does. Yeah, yeah, it sure does. That's ironic. And, it, and over there, it's convenient for people who go there to watch the games today at, at Barclay Center because right across the street, the subway station is there. There's the subway hub. Also, the Long Island Railroad, everything is right there. You know, so, yeah. but it would have been a great, if, if, if the Dodgers would have stayed in Brooklyn, that would have been a great home for them. I, I, what are you going to do? We have to move on and we have to, uh, you know, count our blessings. You know, hey, listen, but Jackie Robinson, he was the Brooklyn guy. He, he wanted Brooklyn and that's where he was. Anyway, that's it. Uh, was that an April Fool's joke about the uh, uh, being on the telephone as opposed to being on the air here? <laughs> no, uh, it was, it was, it's just not some problems. That's all. Yeah. But when you're in transition, you know, it's just it's just hard to, um, you know, hard to get the right signal. Yeah. So that's why. Mine, mine apologies. Well, we're always prepared here. We're always prepared here. We had you. We popped you right up on the phone. So that's yeah. about it. Okay, we'll, we'll catch you back here next week then. All right, everybody have a nice weekend. And enjoy your stay in New York. Thank you. Take care. That was Brian Camp, ladies and gentlemen, with the latest developments in today's world of sports on the phone this week. Had technical problems on his side, but, you know, nevertheless, uh, we got the sports going out there, and he just wrapped up his part of the 2020 feature. Uh, coming up next, another part of the 2020 feature, uh, minutes from now, DJ Pete's. 20 to the hour and he talks about entertainment and of course reciting all of those birthdays of people of notoriety within this week he's not here today but he was kind enough to leave us information so we could uh, uh relay it to you uh, and that's coming up not too far away from the show so ladies and gentlemen if you're just joining us the name of the show is called the coffee hour my name is frank allen i don't have to say that too much you already know that you've been here for years and uh, it's the coffee hour, so excuse me while I shoot up. So it is April Fools. It is April Fools. Uh, and people still engage, indulge themselves in April Fools. But please, when you use April Fools, don't use it as, as a destructive tool. Use it, uh, you know, be a little funny. Don't, you know, uh, 
do something like stick thumbtacks on someone's chair so when they sit down they'll yell hallelujah um that reminds me of a, a kid in grade school that used to do that uh anyway uh no, don't do it don't stick thumb, thumb it's not a good and it's not healthy either all right but if you want to use april fool say something like uh oh hey buddy there's a, there's a hole in the back of your shirt and he'll look back there and he'll see you know that's not it and um the joke may be on you because that may be the same guy that has millions of dollars in his pockets <laughs> so, so he's laughing to the bank anyway that's april fools it's the first day of april and we're always welcoming and before you know it may will be here and i can't wait for that glorious month that marvelous month that month is when we get back on the air on facebook that's going to happen by the way um in um may it's going to be May 5th, Thursday, May 5th, as we go on the air on Talk Back Live. And then, of course, the following day, the 6th, on uh, Facebook, on uh, the Coffee Hour. And so we can't wait around for that. That's, that's, that's uh, looking good. So we look forward to that. And, uh, of course, you already know why we're not on the air with them, because of the fact that um, we had uh, posted something that they managed to catch two years later. And they said, OK, we don't want that uh it's it's not for me to say it's their conglomerate it's not for me to say you know um that's you know we're not going to do that because they did it and although you know when they do things like that they don't give you any kind of a trial or anything they just lock you up in jail jump put on the the orange jumpsuit you're going in oh we don't want to hear about it. you're going in you know this is the way it is this is the way it will be Anyway, we've got uh, 29 days left before it's all over. You know, initially, it was 59 days, 59 days of torture. And uh, so we ate up all of those days. So we're now we're down to 29 days before we go back on the air. We'll be clear and going back on the air. So ladies and gentlemen, if you're on Facebook, please watch what you say. If you're not a broadcaster on Facebook, I guess you don't have to worry about it. But then again, you know, when you do something wrong, you say something wrong, they could just lock you out all together, you know, which they didn't do with us. They just stopped us from uh, broadcasting on their um, on their platform. But uh, we'll be back. We'll be back. And of course, um, the other thing, too, in conjunction with that is that on Facebook, along with Facebook, along with YouTube and along with Instagram, we are going to be broadcasting on Twitch TV, Twitch TV. So we'll have four sources, four sources. Isn't that marvelous? And that's coming up now we already have a uh, our an account there it's already set ready to go it's all set and ready to go we just haven't decided on when we're actually going to broadcast we were targeting maybe uh at the same time when we go back on facebook maybe before that we'll have to we we'll have to weigh that out but you'll be informed about that but that's going to be an okay we're going to be doing that and see how that works out Hope, hopefully it'll work out and hopefully too it'll grab more people uh, to watch us as you watch us on youtube and facebook and instagram uh, more people on that side uh the medium is is getting larger and larger there are so many great um places to go to do a radio and tv broadcast and uh, of course, you know, YouTube is the king. YouTube, uh, it's right there. You know, uh, Facebook, you know, they're right there. It's, it's the, those are the uh, primaries. And of course, uh, Instagram. And so now uh, this Twitch is kind of a new thing. Uh, I don't know how long it's been around, but you know, uh, we just decided to throw our hat into the ring and uh, take part of it and go live and see how it works for us if it doesn't work well you know you try you try a lot of things and i'm pretty sure later on as time goes along there will be other places to go to add more you know we want to get a worldwide audience here. so no matter where you go everything is worldwide here you know you're on the internet you're watching on the internet everything is worldwide your facebook youtube instagram twitch and others it's worldwide and as i said anywhere you go around the world we'll be there with you right here on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and pretty soon Twitter. That's all here. Uh, we're going to do the weather forecast, but before we do the weather forecast, we're going to, um, right now, um, 
go to DJ Pete. It's time, it's 20 to the hour right now coming up. There it is, 20 to the hour. And DJ Pete, he's not here today, but he left information for us, uh, for us to fill in the part of his part of the 2020 feature is 20 to the hour right now. And let's get started with that, right? DJ Pete, thank you so much. I wanna thank you so much for that. Uh, hopefully he'll get back here pretty soon, but he's making the ducats, so I can't blame him for that. And so here we are. So we'll start off on the, um, it's the 27th of March, 1940, Janice Martin. That's when she was born. We're gonna talk about Janice Martin. Now Janice Martin here, as I read here, um, was born on the 27th of uh, 1940. She passed away September 3rd, 2007 at the age of 67 years old. And uh, Janice Martin was an American rockabilly and country music singer. And she was one of the few women working in the male dominated rock and roll music field. And you may not know her there as the name, but uh, there she is. And she uh, played and she did similar stuff. She worked with, I don't know if she worked with them, but uh, she was like known as the female Elvis Presley. And I'm looking at a photo of her right now, and she kind of looks like Elvis Presley, uh, only in a feminine way. So that's Janice Martin uh, would have been celebrating her birthday uh, today. So thank you for that. Looking further, uh, today, uh, on, the, on that same day, the 27th of, of, uh, of March, 1962, marked the World Theatre Day, World Theatre Day. And that's an event that happened. Okay, here we go over to um, Robert, uh, Robert Gordon was born on this day, March, not on this day, I keep saying on this day, but on this day of 1929, uh, 1947, and on the 29th of March, he was born. Now, Robert Gordon, uh, is, you know, as far as I can see, he's still alive. He was born in 1947, he's 75 years old. And, um, you know, uh, he, um, let's see, what, what, did, what, he, what did he do? We'll see. Um, he was born and he was an American best known for as uh, neo rockabilly songs. So there we have rockabilly. And I like rockabilly music. Rockabilly music is good. You know, it just takes you back a long way. And so happy birthday. And he's still around, uh, Gordon, uh, Robert Gordon. Moon Mulligan, I remember I used to play his records on the radio. He was born on the 29th as well, 1909 is when he was born. Now, Moon Mulligan passed away um, January 1st, back in 1967. He was 57 years old when he passed away. And uh, he was a known professional as Moon Mulligan, but his real name was Aubrey Wilson Mulligan, but known as Moon Mulligan. And uh, that was his nickname. He was the king of hillbilly of, of uh, hillbilly piano players. He was a hillbilly piano player, but he was also a singer as well. And uh, he, he did a song that I used to play a lot on the radio called uh, Seven Nights to Rock and Seven Nights to Roll. It's a great uh, kind of a rock and roll uh, country kind of a thing with the piano and everything. Country Western singer, great. Uh, Moon Mulligan, happy birthday, Moon Mulligan, wherever you may be. And I hope it's in heaven. Okay, Moon Mulligan, and now Eric Clapton was born on the 30th of March, 1945. Everyone knows uh, uh, Eric Clapton. Eric Clapton, uh, still around and kicking. He's 77 years old today. So happy birthday to him. And Eric Clapton did a lot of great um, uh, tunes like Lay Down Sally and In Heaven, which which he wrote for his late son because there was a big story here in New York that's he lived here. I don't know if he's still living here now, but he lived at the time in a high rise uh, apartment area and his son fell out the window, uh, which was tragic. And that song came about in heaven. He wrote for his son and he was a great guitarist, blues singer, played with the likes of a lot of great people in the blues area, B.B. King and, and a lot of other people. So, uh, so happy birthday, Eric Clapton. Keep bringing that music on, keep playing it. As long as you play it for us, we'll play it for you. We'll play you on the radio, you know? At least I used to play him on the radio. Ted Heath was born March 30th, 1909. 
all right, back in time. Now, Ted Heath passed away November 18th in 1969. He was 67 years old. And uh, he was a British museum, a, a mu musician, and a big band leader, too. And he goes back a long way. So those big band era people, they, they made a big contribution there. So uh, happy birthday to uh, Ted Heath. Ted Heath. Herb Alpert. Now, a lot of people get their name wrong. It's not Albert. Some people say Herb Albert. It's Herb Alpert. That's, spell, that's spelled A-L-P-E-R-T, Alpert. Herb Alpert and the Tijuana Brass, remember that? Well, anyway, he celebrated a birthday just yesterday, the final day of March, he celebrated a birthday. And so he's 87 years old. And he plays some great music. And I listened to, I love this Tijuana Brass. I loved it. I loved it. He played, um, uh, he did hits like uh, Taste of Honey. He did the trolley song. And uh, he, he, he was uh, part of the Discover person. He discovered um, uh, people like uh, uh, the Carpenters. You know, as a matter of fact, the AMM, a m Records was his record company. He teamed up with a, another guy and they became a m Records and uh, the Carpenters recorded on AM, he discovered them. And so, yeah, he's been around. He played the trumpet and he took his hand at singing too. Herb Albert, happy birthday, Herb. Okay, here's someone I used to play on the radio too. And I'm pretty sure that on the radio, uh, 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 DJ Pete plays, Amos Milburn. We all know Amos Milburn. Amos Milburn was born on this day April 1st, April, and this is no April Fools. He was born on this day in 1927. He's 95 years old today. And he was a uh, R&B blues singer. And he did big hits such as Let Me Go Home Whiskey and uh, Bad Bad Whiskey. And he even did that Christmas song, um, uh, Make, Merry, Make Christmas Merry. And um, he passed away. Uh, January 3rd, 1980, at the age of 52 years old. And uh, unfortunately, you know, he made all those songs that contain whiskey songs, which a lot of people like to hear those whiskey songs. And while, you, you, while you're having a couple of uh, shots of whiskey, you listen to his music, Let Me Go Home Whiskey, and uh, Bad Bad Whiskey. Unfortunately, he died as a result of alcohol. And, uh, but he brought us some great music brought us some great music over the years. And he takes me back to the, I mean, long before I was a DJ, when I was a little kid, I used to hear his music on the radio. I used to hear him. And I uh, used to play all of those great songs, Bad, Bad Whiskey, Made Me Lose My Happy Home, or Let Me Go Home Whiskey, you know? <laughs> and, and just yesterday, it's ironic, because just yesterday I was listening to, you know, I, I have, everybody does, they have the, um, their playlist in their telephone, and, and I play, I love the oldies, so I keep oldies in my telephone and every once in a while I like to listen to it. And, and Let Me Go Home Whiskey was one of the ones that came up. And finally, Dr. Demento, Dr. Demento was born August 2nd, which will be tomorrow, August 2nd. Now, Dr. Demento, we have a little history on him. Uh, he was born in 1941, right? He, tomorrow will be his birthday. He will be 81 years old. Um, let's see, he's a comedian, a uh, prodigy comedian. Uh, also a disc jockey, Dr. Demento, and um, who's an American radio broadcaster and a record collector too, as well. And so uh, he has novelty, he does like a lot, a lot of novelty songs and of course comedy. And a lot of DJs do that. A lot of DJs don't consent stay confined to the radio and they go out there and do other things they sing i mean radio listen a lot of radio personalities have done things uh my idol alan freed not only was he a radio disc jockey he was a band leader he played the trombone you know and so you know we and i i do a little singing you know when the opportunity comes along and uh and uh i, I like to get my hands into acting too you know I, I carried it when I was in college, but I didn't take it any further than that, but who knows, down the line, right? So happy birthday, Dr. Demento.
1941 when he was born. Tomorrow will be his birthday, so happy birthday. And thank you, DJ Pete, for all of that information. Uh, and before we, uh, we're gonna promote his show, but first off, I have some birthdays here. I wanna say happy birthday to pro wrestler Randy Orton, celebrating a birthday today. He's 42 years old today. TV uh, host Rachel Maddow is celebrating a birthday today. She's 49. Pop singer Susan Boyle, she does pop singing, she's 61. Actress Annette O'Toole is 70 today. The late poet and singer Gil Scott Herring would have been 73. Reggae artist Jimmy Cliff, 74 today. Uh, actress Ali McGraw is 83 today. Actress Debbie Reynolds, the late Debbie Reynolds is 90. Unfortunately, she's no longer with us. And she passed away the day right after her daughter, Carrie Fisher passed away. She passed away that following day. Actress, the late Jane Powell would have been 93. Did I say Debbie would have been 90? But Jane Powell would have been 93. Actor Bobby Jordan, who played on the East Side Kids and the, um, along with the, you know, they call it East Side, Ke East Side Kids, East Side Comedy. Uh, anyway, uh, he would have been 99 today. Uh, jazz artist Duke Jordan would have been 100. He was a pianist. And the late actor Ned Gills, who played in West Side Story, you know him, he played as Doc. He would have been 106 years old today. And finally, Mother Clara Mother Hale, who later on opened Hale House. Uh, she would have been 107. So happy birthday to all of those people. And by the way, uh, if you would like to hear DJ Pete, and I urge you to do so, he has a radio show. He plays all the music that we were talking about, blues and big band and all of that. He does that. And I advise you to do that. You can catch him on www.radio-airwave.co.uk. Uh, www That's www.radio-airwave.co.uk. You can catch him there. Mondays, every Monday, Mondays from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. Also, you can catch him on WMPG Radio. That's his hometown station in Portland, Maine. And of course, if you're not close enough to the station to pick it up on the airwaves, you could also pick it up on the internet. It's worldwide on the World Wide Web. They, they don't even say World Wide Web anymore. Some people don't even bother to do www, but here it is, www.wmpg.org. And you can catch the uh, WMPG Radio on that website and you can catch him there every other Tuesday every other Tuesday between 8 30 p.m and 10 p.m at all times eastern and time zone in the United States and Canada so there you go DJ Pete I plugged you and if you get back here you can plug yourself anyway we're looking forward to seeing him come uh come along pretty soon okay um Let's see what we have here. I wanted to uh, talk about those movies. I want to get that in. I want to definitely get that in before anything else. Everything else I can muddle along through, but I want to get that in, OK? Uh, the movies this weekend, we have some for you. Those of you who are looking forward to uh, great movie, classic movies, we have them all for you. We do it every week. And we want to add to uh, your entertainment package each week. So here's something to go into your um, your uh, your bucket list, on your bucket list. Here we go. Movie starting with The Tender Trap back in 1955, starring Frank Sinatra and here she goes, Debbie Reynolds, the late Debbie Reynolds that comes on Turner Classic Movies. You can catch, catch that tonight, Friday at 6 p.m. Eastern. That's tonight, right there on Turner Classic Movies. Now, the next couple of movies are not on Turner Classic Movies, they're on movies. This is another channel called Movies. And that's Little Caesar from 1930, starring Ed Edward G. Robinson. And you can catch that tomorrow, Saturday, at 8 p.m. Eastern. And of course, Public Enemy, The Public Enemy, 1931, with James Cagney and Gene Harlow. That also comes on movies. And that's also Saturday. I think these they come on back to back, Little Caesar and The Public Enemy. Enemy. And uh, uh, Little Caesar is uh, Public Enemies on at 9.40 p.m. Eastern. Okay, so let me repeat those movies again for you. That's uh, The Tender Trap with Frank Sinatra and Debbie Reynolds. That's on Turner Classic Movies at 6 p.m. Eastern. That's tonight. Uh, Little Caesar with Ed Edward G. Robinson. That's tomorrow night, uh, 8 p.m. 
Eastern on movies and The Public Enemy with James Cagney and Gene Harlow on also on movies. That's also Saturday at 9.40 p.m. Eastern. And uh, there you go. You have all of those great movies. And of course, if you like to watch movies, you can go on Movie Channel and check out all of the great movies on there. And Turner Classic Movies has Nikon. They may be more, but these are my picks. You can go there and go right through the guide and find more movies that may tickle your fancy. And right? we hope you do. Okay, I'm gonna talk about my weather. Uh, I, we didn't do that. I wanna muddle right through that right quick. Um, we have right now um, 52 degrees. So it's getting warmer out there. And uh, it's not bad, not bad at all. Uh, we'll, we'll, let, me, let, me, let me recite it for you. Uh, today is gonna to be cloudy this morning and a few showers developing during the afternoon. We'll have a high around 55 degrees. Winds will be uh, west at 15 to 20 miles, or 25 miles per hour. Chance of rain will be 30%. We'll have high wind gusts possible. Tonight will be partly cloudy, so it gets a little better. Partly cloudy, low 37 degrees. Winds west northwest at 10 to 20 miles per hour. And for uh, Saturday, sunshine, high 57 degrees. Winds will be west northwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Saturday night, partly cloudy skies during the evening will give way to cloudy skies overnight. And we'll have a low of 43 degrees. Winds will be light and variable. And for Sunday, as we wrap up our weekend, okay, we'll have rain early, then mainly cloudy with showers in the afternoon, high 51 degrees. Take your umbrella with you just in case you're going to church or something like that. Winds will be west, southwest at five to 10 miles per hour. Chance of rain will be 80%. So you are sure to take that umbrella. Repeating our ter current temperature here in New York, we have 52 degrees and uh, peekaboo sunshine at the moment, but it gets a little cloudy later on. So there you have it. There you have it. Uh, so we got that out of the way. We've got all of the uh, particulars out of the way that we promised you. Uh, and we wanna say one more time that um, we have uh, a chance to go on this thing called um, Twit TV, which we'll be talking about now. Facebook, we're not broadcasting live right now. We go back on the air on Facebook because we're in Facebook jail right now, but we go back on May 5th, Thursday, May 5th, as we start with the talk back live. And then the following day, the sixth on the coffee hour, we'll be back in action then. And hopefully at that time, either before that, or maybe during that time, we hope to be on Twit TV as well. So we'll be broadcasting on four different platforms, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube and Twitch. And we hope to do that pretty soon. That's all coming up. And uh, those of you who are watching us here live on these two places right now on uh, Instagram and on Facebook, uh, you can check us out. Those of you who are Facebook watchers and didn't know that we were out here, it'll be rebroadcast. Whatever you see today, we'll do it. It's not in real time, but at least you'll get a chance to see the show. That's what we'll be doing the whole time we were here. Okay, so um, one more thought about the Will Smith thing of people, I, a lot of people asked me, a lot of comedians, they were talking about it, they support Will Smith uh, and um, they support Chris Rock. But here's my opinion on it. I think two, that both, two were out of line in this sense. Now, Will Smith, I don't know, something could have happened during the point of his uh, episode when he went up on the stage and smacked Chris Rock. It could have been something going on man, that day. We don't know. He's going to be reprimanded. We know that. We know that. But we don't know what consequences he's going to face. He was almost up for being arrested. The LA Police Department was there and they talked to Chris Rock and they said, okay, we're prepared. All you have to do is say the word. You want to file charges. But is the big man he was, he didn't retaliate or anything. A lot of people said he should have. I'm glad he didn't. Uh, he said, no, I'm not going to press charges. But he was a big hit in Boston, I understand, a real big hit in Boston. So uh, there's more to come on the uh, developments happen hour by hour and day by day. There'll be more to come, I'm pretty sure. I wouldn't be surprised if there's something happening as we speak. That's going to do it for me, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, we're going to be back here on um, live uh, next Thursday. Next Thursday, we're gonna be doing Talk Back Live. Talk Back Live, of course, Brian Kent will be along with me. And that's Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern. 
And Brian Cat will be here with the latest developments in today's world of sports. And we'll have a whole lot of fun and a whole lot of conversation. We'll talk more, maybe more if the saga continues. Other than that, I will be back here on next Friday, sharp, 10 a.m., and we'll do more of the coffee hour. It's you, me, and all of us together, and we hope that you're here. Until then, have yourself a great day, a great weekend, and I will see you all back here. So long, everybody. Bye-bye. You've been watching The Coffee Hour with Frank Allen. The producer has been Al Dale. Technical assistance, Dave Taylor. Research by Sandy Pierce. And I'm your announcer, Donna Stenke. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time on The Coffee Hour.